Yes, in case you're wondering, it is scary up here as it seems. <laughs> a half racing, butterflies with stomach gone all bloody Hunger Games on each other. <laughs> and I'm starting to sweat just a little bit, you know, just the shirt's a little wet, but no wet jocks. In fact, no jocks at all. I just thought you should know that. These are thin jeans. <laughs> When I first told people that I was thinking of doing, um, well, this, uh, someone said to me, look, Martin, Martin, telling jokes is no laughing matter. And I said, well, yeah, that's okay. I only tell no laughing jokes. <laughs> On the first week of the comedy course, Fiona said, write this down. She said, we are never, ever going to try to be funny. I thought, okay. I kind of got that nailed already, really. <laughs> Not really what I was expecting from a comedy course. But I guess she's the professional, so she should know. <laughs> she also said that every joke has two parts. There is the funny part, and there's the part you'll most likely hear from me tonight. <laughs> What else can I tell you about myself? Uh, I make a living as a trainer. I spend a lot of time listening to presentations. I've got to say, I think electricians make the best public speakers. And I'll tell you why. When you hear an electrician give a presentation, you know there's very low risk there's going to be any death by PowerPoint. <laughs> What else is it? I'm married, uh, my wife and I both work. Uh, we don't have any children. So I guess you could say we are your stereotypical uh, double income, no kid kind of couple. Yep. Uh, what, do they, what do they call that when you've got uh, two incomes and no kids? Happy, that's right. <laughs> we are happy, we're happily married and we like to travel and we do travel a little bit when we can. And in fact, my wife and I were down in Tasmania just a few years ago, I love Tasmania. I'm a big fan of Tasmania. All the old sandstone buildings built by the convicts, you know, the beautiful countryside, uh, the abandoned copper mine leaking heavy metals into the Derwent River. <laughs> Get onto it, folks. It's a postcard down there. <laughs> we don't have any kids, but we would like to get a couple of his and her golden retrievers one day. You know? But it's just that whole picking up the shit in the street. I can't quite get my head around it yet. I see them, I see people walking around the streets in the morning and they're, they're following the dog around and Rover takes five to take a dump. And then they stick their hand into the Coles plastic bag. You know, and they're, they're bending over, they're reaching down, and they're squishing that into the palm of their hand. I'm going, no, that's not right. Like the plastic bag is going to make all the difference. No, it won't. It's a Coles plastic bag. I can't do that. I shop at Aldi. <laughs> they don't give away plastic bags. <laughs> that. I think mum and dad had a very big fight when they were trying to choose names for us kids. And I'm guessing dad lost the fight because he never bothered to learn any of our names. <laughs> There's only three of us. You know, I've got an older sister, I've got a younger brother. It's not like he had half a dozen names to commit to memory. We're not from Ipswich. <laughs> <laughs> but all my life, all my growing up, pretty much all I ever heard out of Dad was, hey you, or boy. <laughs> hey you, or boy. And there wasn't a lot of tenderness between my father and myself. You know. But there was one time, and I'll tell you about this. He came home, he came at the back stairs, into the kitchen, and I heard him come in, and he said, in a fairly light-hearted way, have you been a good boy today? Have you been a good boy today? And I thought, wow, you know, like, this is it. This is the, the bonding moment. You know, so I walk around the corner, I go into the kitchen, and there's Dad, big smile on his face, talking to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Pick up his shit. <laughs> I hate that fucking dog. I've always been a very competitive person. I was competitive all the way through my childhood. I played a lot of competitive sports. 
Recently, I took up running marathons. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My brother and I would compete against each other at anything. We would, um, who could run the fastest? Who had the most trophies? Who could make the angry vein in Dad's forehead explode? That was fun. But I guess, sadly, maybe. Uh, we, went, we took it too far, like, the, all the competitiveness got too much and I have to say, uh, my brother and I don't get along anymore. You know, in fact, I haven't spoken to uh, my brother in years. But I haven't forgotten him. That's important. All right? I haven't forgotten him, I'm uh, letting all of my jokes in the will. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking stupid. <laughs> uh, oh, I'll tell you what I hate. I hate it when you run into someone in the street you don't want to talk to. You know what I mean? Yeah? We've all got people like that in our lives. They're called relatives. <laughs> you see them coming across the streets, how do I get out of this? It's worse in a shopping centre, okay? Imagine this. I'm going about my business, right? out of the corner of my eye, I see her. And I'm thinking, has she seen me? Yeah. Can I still get to aisle nine before she turns around? Maybe she won't see me if I just go all Jurassic Park and stand really still. <laughs> but then I'm thinking, what if she has seen me and I ignore her, then what? Well then fuck, all the way home in the car I'm sitting there thinking, when's my wife going to turn around and say, I know you saw me in the shops. <laughs> You've been there, I've been here, good night. 